G'day everyone, my name is Dave. Welcome to the Think Orange podcast where we wanna encourage, inspire, and resource you by giving you access to the speakers, thought leaders, and experts who are rethinking and reimagining the way ministry can be done. And today, you guys are in for a treat because I got to interview three of my favorite people in the world to talk about our favorite event, Orange Conference. Now look, if you don't already know, Orange Conference is an experience for family ministry teams, for executive leaders, senior pastors, lead pastors, and even campus pastors, where we give you the inspiration you need to keep going and the practical ministry solutions to make it happen. OC22 is happening in April next year in Atlanta, and this week I chatted with Jamal Jones, who is the Orange Students Curriculum Guide, my good friend Ashley Bohans, who is the Director of Middle School Strategy at Orange, and my former co-host on the Think Orange podcast, and Dan Scott, the Director of Elementary Strategies at Orange and one of my best mates in the whole world. We got together to discuss Orange Conference and family reunions and why Ashley has her Christmas tree up already. So if you're not already watching this episode on YouTube, you may want to check it out later today. Okay, so let's do this. Hey, everybody. Uh, I am so glad that I get to be here with three of my favorite people from Orange. I'm just going to go around the horn and introduce you all. And as I do, I would love for you to let our listeners and our viewers on YouTube know exactly what you do. So first of all, is over here, just uh, on this side of me is my good friend, Dan Scott. How are you, Dan? I am good. It is good to be with you. I miss you in the United States. Well, thank you. And Dan, let everybody know what you do. I am the director of the elementary strategy at orange so kindergarten through fifth grade 252 kids and preteen and the creative teams we have a lot of fun that's what i do love it now down in this corner down here is my good friend ashley now before she tells you what ashley how are you first of all i'm good thank you and i also miss you Oh, thank you. Now, before uh, we get into what you do, I have to ask, there is a Christmas tree over your right shoulder and you got to let us know, what is that all about? Please. Well, it's the holiday season. Like it's fall, like September's Gilmore Girls, October's Wait, Christmas what? tree. And then right now, he, he, it's he, um, I think his name's Alvin this year. Um, Alvin's got like a mustard tree skirt on with pumpkins under it. So it's really like a fall tree and it just brings like the holiday spirit to my home, which it's, is called the It's a fake tree, right? I mean, alive. you don't have to like talk down to it, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, Alvin is a fake tree. Does it get a different name every year? Um, guess, yes. Does it get a different name every it's season? Tree? No, just every year. So it's Christmas and fall. I like it. I like it. It's a Christmas tree with fall colors. So Christmas and fall would mean it's a crawl. Is that what you call it? No, I just call it my Christmas tree because Christmas is from October through March in my house. That's right. I don't put the Christmas decorations on until after Thanksgiving. Okay. So if you are listening. That's respectful. If you are listening to this podcast, instead of watching it, I want to encourage you right now to go over to the Orange Leaders YouTube channel and watch so you can get a look at Ashley's crawl is what I'm going to be calling it. Use the hashtag, <laughs> if you love it, use the hashtag crawl, C-H-A-L-L, crawl. No, one thousand percent. His name is Alvin. Okay, Alvin Kroll. Use the hashtag Alvin Kroll. Let us know (laughs) that you saw it. I think it's a good vibe because theologically, Jesus was born in September, October. Anyway, whole other podcast. Ashley, why don't you tell everybody everybody what you do? Dave dropping them right now. (laughs) I get to be part of the middle school team here at Orange, Director of Middle School Strategy. So all things middle school, resources for leaders and students and parents and volunteers. Brilliant. I get to be part of it and be part of a team of 150 or more contractors who love middle school students. That is so good. I'm so glad to hear that. Now, below me is Jamel. Uh, hey, Jamel, how are you? Dave, I'm doing good, brother. Doing awesome. Good. I'm so glad to hear that. We're going to talk about Jamel in just a moment. You're going to tell us the iterate, you know, where your name come from. We all want to figure that out. But Jamel, tell 100%. us a little bit. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Okay, so I am called the 
foreign students curriculum guide. And what that means is that anybody who begins to engage with the curriculum, the student curriculum, middle school and high school, through our free trial process, I get to be your guide in the journey of discerning if orange should be the best curriculum for you and your student ministry. So that's and essentially it, what I do. And it should be. It should and be. And it should be. That's yeah. facts. So yeah. when you interact with me, I'm definitely going to push you that way. And no, guide you. If, You're going to guide people that way. That's correct. I'm going to guide them that way. Hence the guide in the name. That's and right. And so if you're listening or watching at this moment in time and you are not if you're in student ministry and you're not using our curriculum, you're thinking about it, please do a free trial so we can talk. Holla at your boy. Yeah. I'm here for you. <laughs> Journey to discerning. Is that what you said? Journey to discerning? I love that. That's nice. Hey, yeah. this already. Journey to t-shirt discerning. That's a t-shirt right there. That's a, yeah. That is a t-shirt. <laughs> I agree. I agree. We'll um, get that printed. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk about t-shirts later on as well. Hey, t today we're actually talking about, we're actually here to talk about, not about Ashley's crawl tree. We're here to talk about uh, Orange Conference. For my name. Or you, we're going to get to your name, J Jamel, trust me. Um, Perfect. <laughs> we're here to talk about Orange uh, Conference. And, and it's interesting that you all, this already feels like a reunion to me, especially like dad's one of my best friends in the world. Ashley, I absolutely love Jamal, you and I go way back to what, um, like seven minutes ago? Seven minutes ago. But it already feels like a reunion. <laughs> and we've a always had, percent. At Orange, at Orange, we've always had people tell us that Orange Conference feels like a reunion, right? I'm sure that you've all heard yeah. that. Guys, why I've do you think that. Why yeah. do you think that is? Why does it feel like a reunion whenever we get together in Atlanta with, with um, student and ministry leaders from around the country? Why does it feel like a reunion? Yeah, if Man, I may I'm, go first on this oh, one. Jamel, yeah, do if it. I may go first. Okay, so whenever I think about reunions, I think about family reunions, right? Family reunions, who we introduce. And you know, that's like the feeling I get, this like excited thing. But if you really boil down what a reunion of any kind is, it's really just a group of people who unfortunately don't get to be in each other's lives on a regular basis mm -hmm. or a consistent basis. So they get together like once a year, every other year or something like that for this one big event because they have this shared thing in common, right? Yeah. And I think that Orange does that. And that's why it feels like reunion to so many people because yeah. you make these connections with people that you don't get to see every week. And, but you know that every year we gonna post up in Atlanta and we're going to be together and we're going to share this common orientation that's hard for me to really put in words is really just being orange however mm. you summarize that yeah. it's like it's a yeah. really a feeling as opposed to like yeah. words on a page or in a sentence but the share the shared thing is being orange and then we get together once a year because that's all and, we can really and what, afford and it you goes. know what jamel i want to like piggyback on that because the the family reunion where you just like with the whole song like you always have the crazy uncle you always have like the cat lady you are and like <laughs> you we have orange and there are some people who are like and like remember the guy in the kilt like he was just hardcore and you're like you get to see him and you only get to see him <laughs> once a year but every year you see Orange Kilt Man and he he's incredible and he loves students and he's just all in and he's just really excited about it. But it's 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 fun. But yeah, I mean, I agree. Like you connect with these people and you have this shared experience where maybe you sat together in a session and you heard, you know, some amazing communicator and, and you had this emotional connection. And so you you then come back and you're like, remember that year that we sat next to each other and we were both like sobbing yeah. or we were both laughing or we were both having this like memory. Um, and I, I've actually been to every single Orange Conference since the beginning, before I was on staff. Mm -hmm. I even went to the, I was even at like the first one before it was at uh, the, it, what's it called now? It's like the Gas, Gas South Arena or something, Gwinnett <laughs> Arena, whatever you call it, whenever you joined uh the orange family wow um, i was at the cobb center like it was like way back back in the day 2006 i think um Man. but yeah like every year you just see these people and you're like remember and they're it's just great it's, Dan, yeah, you are, so much fun 
Dan, you are the OCOG. Hashtag OCOG. Yeah. Hashtag, hashtag. I even volunteered that year. Like, wow. you know, I was like, yeah. You are definitely You're on the inside. We're going to get more t shirts made that say OCOG. Um, I think it'll sell I out like that. just personally. Uh, Ash, like tell it. us your, your uh, why do you think it's a feels like a reunion? Um, well, so the whole time you've been talking, I was thinking about how this past year, the Friends reunion came out on TV. And I know not everybody watches the television show Friends. I, no, I don't. on the other hand, have watched every episode probably a hundred times. So I didn't really know what to expect about the reunion. And maybe that's how you feel about Orange Conference. And so like, I'm starting to watch the reunion. And I mean, there were so many feelings I didn't know I had. It was almost like this trip down memory lane to remember who I was in that season of ministry. And then in that season, Ooh. and not even realizing like what each of these people that you get to interact with have taught you about ministry and the memories that flood back. And yeah. I know like, watching the Friends reunion, I was like, Oh my gosh, I want to watch the whole, the whole show over again and watch for things that I forgot, had forgotten about. And so I think the same thing's true with Orange Conference is every year, I feel like it's a chance to interact with the church capital C. Mm -hmm. And you're reminded that you are belong and are part of something so much bigger than just what's going on in your community. Yeah. And yeah. ministry is really, really hard, as you know. And so I know for me personally, I need that time. I need that shot in the arm. I need that reunion to keep mm. going because otherwise yeah. it sometimes just feels alone and I forget what I need to celebrate. Yeah. You know, and Ashley, just, just really quick. I, I love you got, got deep. Like that was, first of all, that was amazing. But I Ooh, also, there's a piano. But bam, along bam. with that, like we have all just collectively gone through this crazy time of ministry where we don't know which end is up and we're on the fly trying to make things work in our churches and this is gonna like we took a year off like we were not together yeah. you know in in 2021 and i think in 2022 when we all come back like it's really gonna feel like what you just said because it's just gonna be this collective like oh my word can you believe that like that happened yeah. And, yeah. you know, and the last time we gathered like this, it was virtual in 2020 and we were on a computer screen and now we get to be with each other and hug each other. And yeah. I, I just think it's just going to just going to be amazing. Yeah. The song by a SZA hits different needs to be the, the edit version needs to be the theme song <laughs> for 2022 hits Orange Conference. <laughs> okay. Because it will. If you agree, drop it in the comments. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Yes, using someone the get us a good version. edit version. Yes, <laughs> I think there's going to be a lot of comments from this one. I, I I have a feeling. Hey, Dan, you mentioned something about how one of the key moments of Orange Conference is experiencing something together, especially experiencing a you know something that is said from stage that really just mm -hmm. um, you know connects with you or maybe yeah. moves you to a new level uh, of some description. Can you like what is one of those things that you've heard? at an orange conference from one of our speakers or one of our breakouts or whatever that yeah. has really moved the ball forward for you? Uh, so many, uh, but I, I would have to say it was a more recent one, but when Reggie Joyner talked about it's personal um, mm -hmm. when, and just this idea of everything changes when it's someone that you know, uh, that going into I think that was 2019. And that going into this season that we've all lived through has yeah. just been huge because whether, you know, things have impacted us personally or we know someone, like we all know someone who has been impacted by COVID, yeah. by politics, by, you know, like all these different things that have happened. Mm. Um, and to be able to just remember, like I literally wish, everyone in 2019 going into that season had heard hey everything changes when it's someone you know yeah and it's all about loving your neighbor and it's all about getting personal i i that message to me was just like and that book i mean just that that whole yeah. thing was just huge for me i couldn't agree more dan i literally i feel like i say that every other day to somebody you know everything mm -hmm. changes when it's someone you know i 
that that yeah. for me is my one as well not that anybody asked me what my opinion is but that's what it was <laughs> anyway uh jamal what about you is there is there one you know speaker or one event one breakout that really stood out to you one thousand percent dave and for me it was my very first orange conference that this back at the biggest Cobb one Center? comes from back at the cop center i wish i was unfortunately yeah. <laughs> uh for me my first orange conference was 2016 and okay. the theme was monday is coming and oh, yeah. i was in a breakout called um monday is coming partnering with parents and at that moment in time i literally had never heard the phrase partnering with parents mm. ever yeah, wow. like i'm not kidding you and that's just i think it speaks a little bit to student ministry culture which is where i spent most of my time as a student pastor for six years and i volunteered in all the family ministry positions um possible positions you know the you know small group for kids and preschool and all that. So I never heard this phrase partnering with parents. Yeah. And so I sat in that breakout and Terry Scalzetti was the, the mm. speaker. And I love direct communication and need it. And he said verbatim, I had it's written in my notes. He says, if you do not have an intentional plan to partner with parents, you mm. are losing at ministry. And I sat there and said, I don't. And I'm trying to lose in ministry. So uh, from that moment on, that Very began good. a process of beginning to figure out what the mess of partnering with parents was and what that is. And luckily, Orange builds a lot of that into the curriculum. And so that was a huge turning point for me and in the ministry that I was a part of. That's awesome. That is so good. What a great moment. What a great moment. Hey, Ash, I want to go to you. Can I just, before you answer, your Christmas trees just give me all the best vibes right now. So thank you for putting that up. Thank you for having that as your background. It really thank is God. just making me feel like warm and nice inside. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> what, what about you? Mm, what, is, mm. what is that one thing that has been said from stage or said in a breakout or maybe in the halls? Because it could be in the halls, right? What is that one thing for you that stands out that was a game changer? Oh, I have two. So, um, overachiever here. Um, <laughs> mm, that three, that yeah. three, three, that three. 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 Okay. The first one. I'm going to have four, by the way, because I'm an Enneagram three, two, and I have to beat you. You can beat me. That's fine. <laughs> I'm I'd kidding. be honored to be behind you. Dave. <laughs> Go, oh, hit, wow. me with you too. hit me with you too. Okay. The first one would be, I think it was like maybe five years ago. Um, there was an emphasis on middle school ministry and raising the flag for middle school ministry. Hmm. Um, and for a lot of churches, I know it's hard to split high school and middle school when it comes to their youth ministry. But I remember um, Reggie and Kristen brought like 20 of the leading ministry leaders in the middle school space up on stage at once. I mean, we had Scott Rubin and Kurt Johnson and Tom Chef Shoes and Cleese and Keith Edwards all of these names up there oh, I, I all the beeps. more than that and <laughs> it was so cool and for me um it was just inspiring because there were so many people up there that had been doing middle school ministry longer than i had um and i just was so encouraged because middle school ministry often is a ministry that either is forgotten or under celebrated in my humble opinion and so for Orange to make such a big deal about a phase that's so important, I know I'm, you know, partial to it, of course, um, it meant a lot to me yeah. and it, you know, not a lot of people choose middle school ministry. And so for the people who have chosen to stay in middle school ministry, um, it made me want to stay. And it was really inspiring to me and hopefully to everyone else that was there. And we gave away a free ebook called uh, Raise the Bar. It was fantastic. And everybody kind of contributed to it. I was on the stage. Jamel, you remember that? I remember that and I have the book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have a great picture from that moment. Um, so that was my first one. And the second one was actually from an attendee. Um, they, I was standing at the curriculum booth, which is where we get to interact with people and talk with partners. And session was about to let out. So we all went out from the main session to the booth. And there was a panel discussion on racial reconciliation that had just happened. It was phenomenal so mm. powerful i'm standing at the booth and this guy walks out of the arena and kind of walks towards us and he's clearly like emotionally moved by what just happened and we just happened to be standing in the booth where he walked out and we were like like should we talk to him i don't know but he walked right up to us to talk to us 
And he said, he's a white man. And he said, I'm a father of two black daughters. Mm. And I never in my life knew what my daughters had to walk through or are going to have to walk through until right now. And that conversation just made me a better dad. Mm. And I I have like chills on my whole body talking about it because like, I'm like, oh my gosh, like you don't even know you just talking to me about that. I I will never forget that conversation Mm. because those are the things that happen that we don't even plan for. Like that's, that's where God's moving at Orange Conference and speaking in ways that we couldn't have even imagined. That's so good. What a great story. If, if that person is watching or listening, we would love to hear from you. Like seriously, reach out to us in some yeah. capacity, like leave a comment on YouTube or something because we would love to, I would love to meet that guy. That That's that's a powerful story. Hey, what mm. about, uh, we've been talking about what's happening, like essentially what happens on stage, but I reckon people want to know what happens off stage. Like what are those moments that <laughs> oh. happen? What are those moments that happen either behind Dave, the scenes? I don't, I don't know if we can share these things. Yeah, come on. This is what, ooh. Ooh, hey, this is a family reunion just with I like, don't know about, you know, Dan, what happened to we introduce it? <laughs> so what know, are those Dan. things, what are those what things BTS that happen? What BTS do we bring out? Exactly. What is the BTS? Maybe off stage, maybe in a green room, maybe just in the hallways. What is the thing that stands out for you guys? Um, I'm going to go to Ashley. Can you go first on this one? No, you just said, I'm going to go to Dan again. Dan. Oh, come on. Okay, I'm going to go to Uh, Jamal. Jamal, what is the thing that stands out for you? Uh, Like a behind the scenes offstage thing. So I remember uh, the Think Orange podcast premiere and I was episode zero, zero. I was listening, right? And there's like a little like friends of the pod get together, right? Mm. And there was a limited run of shirts for the podcast. Very Very limited, like 50 I had to actually um, bully someone to the door. Like we were kind of grouping with the door. I, I bossed up. I gave a little shoulder <laughs> check and I was in there oh. first. All right. And I w- went through that arena and I found, I had it ready because I knew it was here. This is like, this is a huge moment. I had my friend of the pod oh. t-shirt oh, so this is right awesome. here. Because what y'all might not know, I hope, I hope you're watching this and not just listening. I, <laughs> you need to see this on the youtube that, and i hope oh, you're watching because it's at one point this podcast was hosted by you dave and good old ashley bohan wow. so you're both on the shirt wow that's hey, awkward dave's daughter drew those pictures of dave and i Did. which is awesome Did. Oh, yes wow. your daughter good on you jamal that's awkward now i didn't know that you were going to say it was us but that's so awkward like oh <laughs> uh, but, yeah you, you had know, no idea i get dave. it where uh you weren't ready where you weren't ready where your hero was though it's awkward to hear that at 6 30 in the morning but you know i'm glad i'm glad you shared that <laughs> and what about you mate what what's something that's happened behind the scenes that stands out for you you know i don't know i i think knew the amount of crazy that happens in those like corridors of the arena they would i think they'd be amazed because when you you know what do you see on stage like it's so like that team just does like blows the roof off the place right but like backstage you're like you see people checking costumes and you see like all these people like you know can you see my butt like you're just like like (laughs) making sure that like everything's in place and like i I don't know like it i think the behind the scenes stuff is i i and that's why i like i laughed at the beginning like are you sure we can share this to share this stuff because I, I just think that there's so much fun and crazy that's happening mm. in the back that like when yeah. you like you would never even guess that it's so frantic in in you know pockets of of different yeah. places. But um, you know what I think I love behind the scenes. You know, as a person who has been behind the scenes even as a volunteer for a really long time is volunteers are getting cared for um they're having conversations with each other and creating a community back there which you know i have met friends that i like you know you talk about that family reunion i met friends who we volunteered together those first few years of conference and especially in those first few years when everyone was just like trying to make it happen like you're you're hanging stuff you're on ladders you're just making stuff work and um that creates an incredible community. And there are always opportunities for people 
to volunteer and serve at Orange Conference. And it is a great chance to like peek behind the curtain and like maybe even like catch Bob Goff in the corridor and like grab a picture with him or, you know, it's like say hi to, you know, Kara Powell or, and, and, and it, it's just, it's just really great. But um, yeah, so those are, those are some fun, fun That's awesome. memories. Ooh, for me. Can I add a real quick thing to that? That's, no. that's real talk. You talk about, no, all right, I'm done. No, yeah, go. go, go. <laughs> okay, excellent. So um, so Dan talks about how getting to peek behind the curtain, and sometimes we peek behind the curtain, you're disappointed. Nah, 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 not no, at Orange never, Conference. No. So I got to volunteer one year, and it's conference is over, but all the volunteers stay to do loadout, right? And I think to myself, oh, it'll just be the volunteers loading out. No, everybody. And I mean, literally CEO Reggie Joyner <laughs> is taking phase decorations down off a wall. Mm. Now, President Kristen Ivey is rolling <laughs> pallets of chairs back to where they need to go. Like everybody is hands, all hands on, fully involved. And it's a beautiful thing to see the humility of it all. <laughs> humility of it all. Love it. Ash, what about you? What's, what's the thing that stands out for you from a BTS point of view? I think setting up the parent queue gallery, like through the phases, is one of my very favorite things in setup. And then just the conversations that happen in that part of the arena. Um, and so, I mean, so obviously I'm part of set up, setting up the middle school room. And it's really fun because you're like opening all these boxes and you're like, oh, I forgot about this. You know, it's like everything feels brand new at the same time. You're like, this year, let's write this in the journal that's laying on the bed. And, and we're like trying to get into the mind of a middle schooler. Like, what would their room look like? And we'll ask people passing through, hey, do you know any middle schoolers? Where do you think you might find a pair of shoes like this? Like, and kind of like polling people as they're coming through, because if you've ever walked through the gallery, it's like so beautiful. Like parents have been in charge of this whole setup. And then you get to middle school and it's like a bomb went off. And it's like, <laughs> what just happened in this room? Which is how a lot of parents feel in that phase because so yeah. much is changing and their kid isn't the same anymore. And so we want that room to reflect it. So I would say like just the heart and the amount of hours that go into setting yeah. up the wow. Q gallery. And I mean, it feels like a reunion. You walk through the phases of a kid's life and it brings back all these memories, all these sure. feelings, all these moments you missed out on and moments that you captured on, you know, a picture of or that you will forever remember or that you got a shout out from from somebody that's so good. i love that that's so good ash that's a great that's a great one uh, for me which again nobody asked but i'm going to share it anyway um <laughs> dave, you start asking dave stuff you know i'm part of I will. I will. i'm part of I'll the orange conference team as well here's what stands out for me i actually don't feel like there are any behind the scenes moments I've been to conferences at that arena, like for, for various organizations from Catalyst to North Point and whatever. And, and, it, and it does always feel like there's a behind the scenes component to it. But I feel like at Orange Conference, and I'm not just saying this, I just feel like the behind the scenes spills out into the hallway. And so it doesn't feel like there's a behind the scenes. It feels like it's just one big thing that just bleeds into the another. But if I had to pick one moment that could technically be called hashtag BTS, it would be when Jeremy Cowart was there one time and oh, yeah. uh, he was he was the most lovely guy. And I asked him if, like, could I get a photo, please? And he's like, of course. And I grabbed the person who was next to me, gave him my phone and said, could you, I wanted Jeremy Cowart to take the photo, not be in the photo, because I wanted to say that I had a photo shoot with Jeremy Cowart. And he <laughs> took <laughs> it. I wanted, I literally just wanted a profile. But he thought I was... <laughs> gonna get him in the photo but i just wanted him to take the photo that was one of my highlight moments i and That's i actually amazing. think i actually think he appreciated it and jeremy if you're watching i still have that photo it means the world to me um okay yo i feel like we could talk for ages because this does feel like a bit of a a, a family reunion if mm. there was somebody who's listening to this who's never been to orange conference before and they're kind of sitting on the fence jamal jamal i'm gonna ask you first okay they're sitting on the fence. They've never been. What would you say to them? How would you guide them to come to their very first Orange Conference? I would guide them by saying, you need to do something for you. 
Mm-hmm. All right. And what you need to do as a ministry leader is to get somewhere where you're not strange or you're not alone. And because sometimes, you know, hopefully you're blessed with an incredible network of ministry leaders that you're around in your community, but I feel like the majority of us aren't, whether it's just busyness or, you know, at worst, the the kind of territory war that can happen between churches that's so negative. Like you need to get somewhere that is neutral, that is safe, where you can really lock arms with some homies, rub shoulders, talk that shop talk that you need to help you feel like, all right, I got this, I can do this. And just have some people that say, yeah, me too with you. And Mm -hmm. you probably need that. And you probably don't have it or you haven't making time for it. Orange Converse is the perfect reasoning, excuse, whatever you need to get to that kind of place. So you can be normal or you can have some people saying, yeah, that just in my church, just with my kids or my elementary schools, my preschoolers, my high schoolers, my middle schoolers, you need that for you. So you've got to do it and bring some people with you. That's awesome. Dan, what about you? Why should people come? to Orange Conference 2022? I mean, to echo some of the things that we've been already saying, just the fact that we're probably coming off of a really hard year and you you, you need some self-care. I, there's always gonna be that moment. I, I What I love about the way that the week is crafted, it's super intentional. Everything Orange does, what I love being a part of this organization is everything is intentional from the moment you step foot in the arena, in the breakout spaces, everything has been thought through and everything has been guided. And you're gonna have moments where you expect that you're going to be cast vision and you're actually shepherded and pastored. Mm. And you are not gonna realize you even needed that. And you're, you're gonna be like, oh my word, that like, I need it. Like, I, I didn't realize how much that space, like there have just been years where I thought I was good going in and I was like, oh yeah, this is going to be the year that like, I'm going to give, I'm going to give, I'm going to give. And even as a staff member at Orange, I'm sitting in the back listening, you know, to, you know, Mark Batterson or listening to someone and being like, yeah. oh my word, like I absolutely needed that message. I didn't realize that, that I was as tapped out as I was. Um, that's great. I think moving into the church of the future, I think we're all trying to figure some things out, right? And I think this is going to be giving us an amazing chance to listen to some leaders who are on the bleeding edge of ministry, like Mm. not like they are just, they're like way out there and they're trying some things and we're going to be able to listen to them and hear from them. And then debrief with like all these people who are, you know, like-minded thinkers who are going to help bring those ideas to life you know, in the context of ministry. So yeah. there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot this year that I would say you want to be in the room. Yeah. Like you want to be in the room where it happens. Where it happens. Yep. <laughs> Jamal, I'm going to probably have you sing a song by the end of this. Not going to lie. Done. Ashley, I'm ready. <laughs> Ashley, what about you? Why should somebody come to Orange Conference 2022? Um, I've said this before, but ministry is way too hard to not be strategic. Mm. And I think that by bringing your whole family ministry team, your whole next yeah. gen team, it gives you a shared vocabulary, Ooh. a shared vision. I think that what you get at Orange Conference, the three days of Orange Conference is similar to what you get in your youth ministry after a camp or a weekend retreat. True. Like so vision and energy and, and like just cut, like Dan, you were saying, coming out of this really hard year, two years of ministry, I think the future of the church, this conversation, this shift in what the future of the church could be is as big as the shift from, you know, non-small group to small group ministry. Like it's a huge, yeah. and we need to be talking about totally. our budgets and our personnel and our energy, how to work smarter and digital mm-hmm. discipleship and social mm-hmm. media and short form video. And how does all of this intersect with the future of the church? so that we can keep moving forward. You know, we didn't just lose stuff in the in this pandemic. We gained a lot as the church. Mm. How do we not Ooh. lose what we gained? And let's Ooh. move forward. Can we can we get a hmm on that? Mm. Can we get a piano to go yeah. brown, brown? 
Can we say it again? Bro, bro, I started say like, again? Bro, I started bro, bro, shouting. Bro. I, I don't yes. know. I got really excited. Yeah, I got you, you, ran the it, camera. you ran into Ashley Preacher mode. Like, oh, I know. Good. Sorry. That was excitable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said, weird. we have gained in this pandemic. You thought we <laughs> lost, but we actually gained. How can we keep oh. what we gained? Who? Yes. And you tried to get people to sing. You didn't even like try to get him to sing. And like, there he is. Like I'm here. He I really feel like, is a friend of the pod. I feel really feel I've like been he inspired. Should have, he should have been like singing in the choir notes the whole way through this whole conversation. It would have been awesome. Y'all, cool I think um, this has been an absolutely incredible conversation. I feel like I've been part of Orange Conference now because I got to see all my friends and got to hear some great wisdom, got to have a whole bunch of fun as well. So I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to uh, talk to all of us about what Orange Conference is like. You guys are absolutely incredible. And you know what? I'm just going to say this. I can't wait to see all of you you people right here and everybody who's watching and who's listening uh -huh. on at Orange Conference 2022. Am I right? Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye, right, friends. See you soon. Bye. See y'all at 2022. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I thought that was a lot of fun. And my hope is that this episode makes you want to be part of OC22 because I know I would love to see you there. You can get your tickets and more info at thinkorange.com forward slash orange conference. That's thinkorange.com forward slash orange conference. And hey, I would really suggest you get your tickets today before prices go up. Well, thanks so much for listening. My name is Dave Adamson. And remember, when you think next generation or church strategy, think orange.